Tell them. There it goes. It's time for new news, sports. All about sports. And computers trying to jack up. <laughs> We're trying to talk about sports. Sweaty jock straps. Women that like the funk. Women that like the funk. Do you like your athletes a little stinky? Yeah. You know what? Some of the female athletes are a little funky too now. Which sport? Special track. Some of those track and field. I used to date track and field girl. I, I, you know what? I think basketball. They can be funky. I think basketball probably got them. Oh, the girls in basketball? I think, I think they got them. I haven't dated any ballers. <laughs> you know, but you, some domination. You know, the, the basketball the girls we had at Howard, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you, had the, you had the dominatrix. I tell you, I had a bad experience. <laughs> I had a bad experience. That's why you got to watch out for the big old muscular ones. They're scary. They might... That's when they break out the strap on. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys ready for the ready new, new sports? sports. I'm, I'm showing it right now. Hey, look, it's the, there's no new news about Tony Parker. I'm not saying that it's a big surprise. You guys already know he's out for two to four weeks. What happened? Because he got injured. He See, got injured. first he loses Ava Longoria, then he gets injured. Ain't that a bitch. We probably got injured when he lost it. It's probably the haircut. He's probably more than that, man. Tony, loosen up. Get, grow, let it grow out a little bit. Yeah, hey, well, here's a chance to turn around because he, Mario respects the coach, Popovich, I do. a lot because he is a protocol process, discipline, he takes no bull. Papa don't take no mess. I know that. <laughs> he don't. Papa don't take no mess. But the, the worst nightmare can come when you know when your team is long in the tooth when it comes to age from your big three. And you take one of those big three because Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Tim Duncan, they're the big three. The one who's probably lost some edge off their impact on the team has probably been Tim Duncan first. Manu fights through his injuries, but he always comes up and delivers. He even always though bounces, they, even though, bounces back. Right, even though I would say this, Vic, even though that's part of the spec, you know, they're still he's having a great year. Yeah, no, he's still he's surrounded by some great role players that I like, and, and I think it complements them. But I think here's the part that hits. You know, the injury to senior, we call senior players, the, t- the, t- the IQ principles. I always say these are the guys that make the engine run. The first thing I thought about is, Four weeks out for Tony Parker puts him on the fringe of the playoffs, which you still need time to recover to go into the playoffs. So you always want to go in playing up on the up. Everybody knows that the regular season doesn't matter as much. But when Tony comes back, if he comes back at the time required, the first impact I got was that San Antonio's bench has stepped up. And they stepped up in such a way more that you, you actually say Blair and the outside shooting, the three-pointers, all of them have done such a wonderful job. I do think that here's where it hits them the hardest. Because you take somebody out like that, your bench is affected deeply, oh, more yeah. so. So here's the question. You know, you have four choices here. You know, injury may keep Parker out until the start of the playoffs, but if so and if not, will it either affect the chemistry of the team? Will Manu Ginobili and the Spurs bench step up? Uh, can Does Popovich care and say, hey, look, I, got, I really got bench players that's going to step up? Or... Does he have a secret weapon on the bench that's going to replace the production of Tony Parker going into the playoffs? You know Coach Popovich, Mario. You I think he can handle uh, stressful situations. Losing players to injury is part of the regular reoccurring issue right. in the NBA. And some people handle it better. Some people don't. You know, when you have a player like this, they're essentially irreplaceable. But you go a different way. That doesn't mean that your team has to be weaker, that your team has to perform less, and that's what the coaches know. Right. People can step up. You can change directions. Some, you know, In place of this, other people step forward. You do more. No, I think they're going to continue to be winners. Okay. Now, and you know what? The part that I think, and I agree with you to a certain degree, I do think that right offhand, the greater coaches know how to attack the weakness. The right. weakness won't be that they don't have players on the bench who, who are role players, the weakness is going to be who is that cat that is a general leader on the floor that you can replace Tony Parker with. It won't be because they got, they're got they not weak in outside shooting, penetration of the ball, distribution. You need another floor general. And I exactly. think that's the part where I think a good coach will say, I know where to attack them at. And I think Dallas, to me, I think Dallas, who's way better each year, better defense this year, is looking at them and saying, we got a target on your back now because you got four or five weeks left in the season. We're not that far behind you. If we get that number one spot, I think they have more of an advantage and stand more to game than even the Lakers. What do you think? I got to wait and see because I really expect the Spurs to step up. 
We'll see. Mm. We'll, we really will see. Okay. Uh, I think they've got a strong bench. Right. I think that uh, we're going to act. I think they're going to maintain fairly well. Now, how long is he supposed to be out? He's supposed to be out at least two to four weeks, minimum two. Ma- they say max four. That, that'll go fast. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, and I agree with Take, you. Get a nice rest. <laughs> get a nice rest. Well, come on. It, but, Mark, you know this. You come from a sports background. You used to play Parcheesi and football at the same time. So, the bottom line is, <laughs> here, here's the rubber where it meets the road. Momentum always swings you into the playoffs. Do you agree? Just like Charles Barkley has said and many others have said, you just can't turn on defense like a switch. Oh, no, because defense is an attitude. First of all, you can't turn it on because the players that do it do it all the time. That's right. It's a, it's a desire issue. Right. Defense is a hustle issue and a discipline issue. So it's, it's pushing yourself to go hard at it and being consistently right, uh, and you know consistently coming at it. So no, no, I don't know. You don't you don't see it, that much drop off. You're saying, I, I, I think there's gonna. I think we're going to make up for the loss with good coaching. Right, and again, there's other people there that can step forward. And it's only two to four weeks. And and that's okay. most important to have him back for the playoffs. Okay. No, no. And you know what? I'm more – if you have a coach like uh, Popovich, I'm more optimistic of what he can do. Yes. I, I'm very optimistic. But I do still believe when you look at Tony Park, this is one thing they say. You know, you used to – like I said, I always go back to what you're saying. Even if you know what the players do on the other side of the line in football, and, and the guy is 380 pounds and 6'6", six, six, and you're the, across from him, and you're six feet, and you're 270 pounds. He said, here's all the technique you can work on. But you know you're going to have to work on your technique every time you stand across from that cat. He still has the advantage because he says, my weight, my distribution, I have a, a lot more that I can, at the longer part of the game, I get to wear you down because of my it's weight. It's just that those examples and examples of people who do it despite those things are legion. Right. Big baby. Yeah. Another one. In other words, there's always the example. Allen Iverson, yes. that was his whole career. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. know, uh, playing with people way bigger and supposedly one of the toughest attitudes on the court. He backed down from no one. Right. You know, so there's examples all over the place of people defied odds. Yeah. Obviously, being talented is not enough. The most talent, like they, they were just discussing this, the most, the strongest player on the team is rarely the best, best player. player. Right. The fastest player, player on the team is rarely, rarely. the best right. player. The execution. So obviously there's some other qualities yeah. that go into that. And, you know, it's the part, like I said, I've been having conversations with people. You, every, every year you see the teams that play the best ball come from senior leadership, experience, and exactly. great coaching. Exactly. And so uh, that's why I say I'm optimistic about Greg Popovich and what he can do to recover this. But I do believe somebody off that bench is going to have to step up in a role that's going to be more of a oh, distributor yeah. to help Manu Ginobili because everybody knows right now the ball is going to be in his hands to bring the ball up. And they're going to be prepared to say, wear him down because Tony is better at breaking down play by play than Ginobili. Ginobili is a specialist <laughs> when it's the alternative. And I think when they turn around and say, here's the weakness you attack, but I do believe. San Antonio will be okay. I just think Dallas is going, we're on you. So, no big problem. No other big news as it comes to NBA, uh, the game. Got to give up props to Denver, the Denver Nuggets, winning three out of four since the big trade. So, Ain't that something? New York and Denver both are winning with their trades to benefit their teams. Um, I think the leadership on Denver is going to be somewhat questionable because you do need a floor leader no matter what and i think that's the part that meets the rubber meets the road and it's going to be difficult uh outside of that i i will say <clears throat> that the miami heat it, it, right now probably is causing a lot of concern because people are not worried about the regular games they really are trying to say between now and the playoffs if you guys don't have a scheme set up to be the go-to player game-winning player it's not going to be discovered between now and four or five well, weeks from now. That's what the, see, that's where the coaching, to me, is the issue. It was a different coach, right? You know, like uh, Doc Rivers, or okay. Doc Rivers, or someone I think who's not. When I think a lot of it all, when you have the young coaches right. coming in, I, and you have very, very uh, uh, popular and valuable players, I think sometimes they get leveraged out. Do you in terms be- of some of the decision making. Do you believe, I mean, this is going to be hard, and I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, 
the, the weakness on the team is not LeBron being the last shot taker or Wade or Chris Bosh not being a true, true center. Based on the talent at hand, do you truly believe when it comes down to being able to control the scheme, excuse me, that Eric Spolstra is the weakest link in the organization well, between the floor and the coach? When I say, and I, yes, but I want to be careful how I say that. I'm not saying it's weak in terms of his skill set. Right. I'm not so sure, again, as a young coach with those kind of powerful players. Right. You know, we watch Magic do this in L.A. Right. With, 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 with uh, Westhead. True. Okay, so yeah. I'm just saying you may not – we may, may not even be able to see the full implementation of his offensive or defensive schemes right. because of the players' either unwillingness to carry it out or that kind of focus. So that's my issue. I don't know if that – you need a really, really strong, really strong coach. Yeah. The one thing they do have there right. is a really, really strong GM. Uh, yeah, Riley. <laughs> oh, he's president, isn't he? Well, whatever role yeah, he is. He's, he's still I, the he's president. Because, you know, he moved – I must admit. Yeah. But he's Screw the it. man. He is. I agree. He's the man. I agree. And – Ultimately, I think people answer to him. So yeah. my, I think it's a young coach, and I don't know that we're really seeing his schemes uh, implemented. Flourish so. the way. Okay. And I agree with you. I'm not saying Eric is not a good coach. I'm saying he's under a condition very unique. How many coaches get big three superstars? Exactly. Very, very few. <clears throat> very hard. I mean, we took for granted the Lakers with Kareem Worthy and Magic. I mean, we didn't call them the big three. We just called it Showtime. Right. So – I, I'm waiting right now, but I do see that there is a problem coming as it are, as they as it, they get to point to point play on the floor. That's going to be slowing down because they're going to say we're not going to let you run. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. You know, the teams that step up, Chicago, Boston, is going to slow them be, down. That's why I go as coaching because I think that they are able to pull off with that kind of a group. You, it's really you have a variety of ways to go. Right. As a co- different coaches would take them in different directions. True. And there's enough raw talent there to go in every one of those directions. True. So I'm not so sure. Yeah. I, I really am not so sure what's the way to run that. Yeah. And I'm 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 optimistic about it. I just I just think I think right now when they see that this team is like 1 in 7 against 500 teams or better. That's not an anomaly. That's telling you right now that if you're going to go in and turn this on, we see you beat up on all the lesser teams, but you're one and seven against the winning teams. What does that tell you? It tells us what we've already seen against the top teams where you have the cohesiveness, like the Celtics, like uh, 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 teams like Chicago, right? Uh, other teams where you have that, that they struggle because it's a team sport. True. And you just can't come in. Yeah. I with agree. the best players, quote unquote, and win. It just doesn't work like that. I agree. I agree. Okay. All right. We're going to switch over here. Go over to the month that we are celebrating, brothers, March 1, 2011. We got about what? Maybe about, what, about 12? No, maybe about eight, 18 months before 2012 and before the earth cracks open. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to put out the bad news. 18 y'all. months. <laughs> it's, it's 2011 now. I hope it's time machine. <laughs> Now it's about eight months, not 18. Right, wait a minute. They said December 2012. Oh, December 2012. 2012, that's what I'm saying. It's a little more than 18 months, but I'm just saying, you guys get your, get your groove on. That's the day that, that which the Mayans never said the world ended. That's the day, last day in the calendar. I crack on somebody walking, well, we found another calendar. Oh, shit. And I bought all that stuff. And I bought on everything. I bought. Well, I got plans. They, they never said the world was ending. People go like, well, the, it was the last day on the calendar, so the world must be ending. Must be ending. Who the heck? <laughs> Head Start is doing a wonderful job. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You're right, man.